Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Fantastic, you, Charles. Fantastic uh, film. For an English period piece, it actually seemed to be a lot of fun both to watch and to make. This is a really fun film. It actually was. I said to myself, I'm not in the mood. I've really got to have some fun. Life's really short. Speaking of the original, this is a, a play written by Noel Coward, first directed by Alfred Hitchcock. So, yeah. I mean, there's some pretty serious shoes that you're filling there. Well, we had two masters. We had, we have the master, which was, which is Coward, and he's still known as the master. And then we had the master of suspense. Now, what Hitchcock was doing, doing a silent movie of a Coward play, I mean, it's just madness. And you look at the film and... It's not Hitch. He wasn't Hitch yet. But if you look at Coward, because it was only his second play, second or third play, he wasn't Coward yet either. When Sheridan and I, my co-writer, attempted to rewrite it, we thought, what would the older Coward have done? And then I thought, OK, if Hitchcock had redirected what he'd done when he, he was 18, when he was 50, what would have he done? And then as a director, I kept going back to the two masters. The nature of trying to hang on to Coward, we said, let's be pure to Coward. But he did write a melodrama. And I said, this has to be a comedy. It's just not funny. It has to be the funny coward, not the bitter t coward. There's something wild about that child. It's so contagious. So with each draft Sharon and I did, we went through a little bit more of original coward disappeared. Very coward-esque, but at the same time it's hard when you actually start chucking a no coward original out the window. And that pissed a lot of people in England off, I'll be perfectly honest. I was about to ask, how, how was it received an Australian reworking coward? He's quite the bastion of English wit. I don't think it went down too well. It opened at Toronto Film Festival a couple of months ago, went through the roof. We opened in Italy and Spain a couple of weeks ago, went through the roof. And then we opened in the UK. And I have never had... That was some of the most vicious reviews I've ever had in my life. And it, was just, and it took me a while to work out that I was pommy bashing. The play was pommy to bashing, and the English at the moment really not in the mood to be pommy bashed. Ten years between drinks is, uh, is quite some time. I, I had qu quite famously had a very bad ski accident where I broke my back, pelvis and legs. And I had problems with the industry. I had, I had demons and, and, and you know, I lost my confidence, I'm not going to lie. But then once you, you know, you're stirring death in the face, um, I kind of thought, I can do this again. Of course I can do it again. And I was about to move to Barcelona. I'd actually put deposit down on a house I was going to do another life change and the producer rang me from the airport and said we're on you've got half the pre-production you've got no rehearsals do you want to do it and I went yeah you know what damn you you know the test how dare you I lost the house I lost the deposit I went back and did it and that's it is it fair to say then that the process of adaptation and direction were organically mixed yeah, very much. I mean, when you actually, you know, it's, this, is a, this is a four and a half year process from top to tail. So by the time I got to set, I've already, because I've been writing with Sheridan so often, we, I've got pretty set images in my head. And when you've got those set images, once you're on set and the other, in, particularly when the actors start changing things around, you're also in a situation where it's better to go with that organic route. This was fantastic to get this cast, this level of cast. And, they, you know, it's, it was a tinderbox. I mean, extraordinary talent. And some days we just, I just let them go. And you've got to be prepared for anything there because you never know what Kristen's going to do some days. Kristen Scott Thomas has a great ability of surprising everybody. And that's very tough for the younger actors because if they can't learn to keep up, they freeze like rabbits because we're going off script. It is an, a sensational ensemble cast. What was the process of, of putting the cast together? Well, people get this idea that you do race out and you get dream casts. Well, it just doesn't happen. When you haven't got a lot of money, all you've got is the strength of the script. Not very much money well, for them. They'll say, I'll do it, but it has to happen here. And it has to happen here. So in this instance, we had tons of really good actors, but they all wanted to shoot over a two-year period. We didn't have everybody on the floor until day nine of the shoot. It was a great moment when you look at your cast and say, look, you're all really good, you're, you're pros. There are no rehearsals. It's as simple as that. I'm turning the camera on. Go for it. So the energy level was frightening, and we didn't stop. No one had time to go and sit down again and get back up again. We had trailers for the, the big cast. Chris never made a trailer once because I'd be set up again. I had three cameras and we just went for it. And I, you know, halfway through the shoot, I threw my hands in the air and said, I can't work like this. I promised myself I wouldn't ever work like this again. And Kristen turned to me and said, what are you talking about? She said, this is the best fun I've had in years because we're really making a movie. Would you do it again? I mean, is because is, there is a lot of energy, as you say. It certainly comes through in the film. Is this something that you would then do again or is, are we promising again not to do it? I think this is it. I don't know how much more I've got left in me, honestly. What is next then? The fighting to make it a, a, a fun piece. That's taught me one thing out of all this is, I think my strength is humour. I've been fighting Priscilla since, ever since it happened. 
But I've realised if I do go forward with this, I basically I think I've got to concentrate on the strengths and stick to comedy. I mean, is that just a, such a bad thing? Certainly not in these times. And no. uh, you certainly, as you say, it's very much a strength. Thank you very much. Thanks Seven. a lot, mate. Thank, Thank you. you.